So I wanted to show a little bit about the power vision, the computer aspect of it when it is connected to the computer via the USB cable. You'll see PC link mode active. Now there's a couple things you want to do here. Unfortunately, I can't do screen captures on my Surface Pro. It's not allowing me to. Don't know why. But you're going to want to go in and update this thing under, I believe, Setup, Check for Updates. And it's going to launch a little PV update window. And it's going to say, you know, prompt you, you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I wouldn't have clicked on it if I didn't want to do it. But let's double check 20 times. Hit OK. Here's the key. Now, they're not real descriptive on how to update these. But you want to compare the installed version and the latest version to make sure these numbers are the same. When they are not, you want to highlight that line. Now, be careful because you want to do these in order. Some of them actually will come and tell you you got to load this and load that. Download and install selected updates or you can load from local file. Load from local file, obviously you've downloaded it before, you know where to go look to find them. I just do download and install selected updates because it does give you a check on the end to let you know that that update has happened. So that's how you update your Power Vision. Now that's very important. If you just bought that thing, these could have been sitting on the shelf for a while. You want to update it to the latest, greatest, especially some of the old firmware only allowed you half the capacity to load tunes and to save information. And when I upgraded this one about uh, two years ago, it came back and it opened up double the amount of slots. I don't know what it was uh, because I'm old and I forget shit. So uh, you want to, you know, definitely make sure that that's updated. Now, the important thing and what I wanted to get to here was the power vision is you can go in and, and when you create like gauges that you're monitoring and say for example the gauges that i monitor because i had a problem with throttle position uh not the sensors but the actual throttle position the, the butterfly itself in the throttle body uh the sensor coming from there because the wires got burned uh from the heat coming off the engine harley davidson has a tech bulletin that you could update the pins replace the pins they're full of shit that did nothing for me, so I had to source a new plug, ran new cables, spliced them in underneath the gas tank, did color for color. Quite a big thing for me to do to find. So I monitor the throttle position, the butterfly itself, the uh, throttle position, the, the twist grip, and I'm having an issue with my voltage regulator, so now I'm monitoring the battery and then the voltage output from the regulator. And then, you know, for shits and giggles, my top, I, I, I may put a, a splash screen on there. I monitor what gear I'm in and what RPM I'm in because I'm, I'm in a troubleshooting mode right now. So that's why I have those on there. But the cool thing about it is whatever you're monitoring in the gauge, uh, the, the gauges on the screen, you can hit start data or data log. Hit start data log. And if you're writing, it will capture everything you're monitoring on that screen, everything you've programmed the unit to monitor, in my case, the gear, the RPM, the, the battery voltage, the output regulator voltage, the um, you know other things, the head temp, engine temp, things like that. It'll monitor that. And then you have to hit stop log and know the number, but you'll go out and you hit this get log. Now, I've already done this and cleared them. You're going to go out and hit get log. It's going to pull all the log files that you've created out of your power vision. And when you do that, what's really cool is then you can go back and open those files up and get in and find out what's going on based on what you monitor. Now, unfortunately, I'm kind of looking underneath the, the phone here. There's all my data logs. Now, this one's a pretty intense data log. Microsoft's going to complain that I have an unregistered version. They're full of shit. I registered this thing 10 times. I'm tired of dealing with them. They want me to reboot my, or reload my Surface, which ain't going to happen. But you can see some of the data that it logs there. And let me expand this out so you can see what the descriptors mean and what it's actually monitoring and what I've told it to monitor. But here's the, the what I'm trying to get at. Now I'm getting into the data that I want. I can see 
what gear I was in, what my voltage was, the battery plus voltage, my engine temp, my speed, because I, at the time I had it set for that, uh, my battery voltage, 13.2. So the difference is I can see what my battery voltage is and what my battery or my regulator output is. So I can see if that matches. Now that's key because I'm going to go down and scroll down on this and you're going to see some differences there. And it gets down there. It takes a while. Let me do page down. That'll be quicker. Sorry. I wish that was sooner. I may have to load a different file here. But now you, you see what's happening. I'm getting into 12.9. So my voltage regulator is dropping. Now you can see that corresponds to what's happening there. Now it could be a thing kicking on. Maybe you got a newer bike with a fan and all of a sudden that drops it, brings it down, a low or a, a high draw current on that. Um, but nonetheless, that's kind of giving me a picture of what's going on to my bike in real time. And I can see it on my screen if I'm driving. But more importantly, I've created these log files because I want to go back and look at them later. Now, again, you can see this gets down there. Now, the problem with my voltage regulator, what I'm experiencing now is the bike is actually discharging as I drive uh, or that I'm idling. It's I'm drawing more current than my regulator is allowing the bike to, to put back into the battery. And I'm seeing these numbers on my power vision jump up and down. And I'm going to show you a screen of that. But these things are erratic. They're jumping all the way down to 11.7 volts. At 11.4 volts, good luck if you're ever going to get that bike to start, especially a cammed out Harley Davidson like I have. And I've got a lithium battery at 10.4 volts. It shuts down. The bike shuts off, gives up the ghost because it's not going to allow you to overheat that lithium battery. And when I was going down the road, I have two-way communications. I'm talking to my girlfriend and I'm telling her, Hey, I'm getting down to 12 or 10.6 volts. And I knew when I said to her, hey, as soon as you see me pull off, that's because that battery shut down uh, because the voltage regular was not charging at the time and left me stranded. Of course, lithium battery takes about 30 to 40 seconds to recharge it, fire the bike back up, gave me another five mile drive to where I could at least get off the road in a safe area and then pick the bike up via a trailer. But that was kind of cool because I could see that on the power vision. And I'm going to fire it up here so you can see that. Um, but um, actually, I'll put the power vision before power vision before because that way people can be interested in what they're doing. But when I started the log file, I was able to go back and see that that happened. I could see what my engine temperature was, what gear I'm in, uh, other stuff. I'm going to load a different file here because this one's rather large instead of going back and forth trying to find it. Um, won't get the splash screen again. So here we go. So you can go and look what the data is that this bike or this power vision is reading on my bike. And you can see different things that will give you an idea of what's going on in your motorcycle. This is key, especially if you're a wrench turner. You own a Harley, you're a wrench turner. Jack bikes, I say it guys, break your heart or not. Those things just freaking run for 20 years without giving you much problem. Uh, Harley Davidsons are worse than Fords. They're breaking down every other day. Um, sorry, Ford guys. Uh, but, you know, it gives you data that may be very useful to what's going on here. You can actually pull out your DTC codes, more information about it. If you didn't clear them, send those off to Harley or a tech and they can read what's going on more than just you know a p205 i'm making shit up code things like that but raw data about those codes so that's the power vision uh dude it really does give you a lot of bang for the buck when you buy these things and you first uh fire them up you're going to want to read your existing power or your existing tune your stock tune You'll want to store that in a safe location. It'll prompt you, especially, sorry, moving the camera around. If you get this, get info, it's going to go back. It's going to say, hey, you detected a tune, uh, noticed it wasn't saved. Do you want to save it? Do that before you do anything. So that's the information on my bike. That's how they know this thing is married to my bike. Sorry, you got to be able to see the mouse here. Um, they know everything about it. And that's how they marry it to the bike. So you cannot take this Power Vision unit 
move it to a different bike, do all your tunes and all that. Now, you can take this Power Vision unit on any Harley Davidson if you have the right type of adapter plugging into the back of this Power Vision down to your motorcycle and you can read diagnostic codes. You can pull the start the data files just like I'm doing. So they at least do that. Um, but that is key. Again, you want to download or back up your original tune in case you screw something up and you at least want to start back to a base. Uh, I recommend doing that. The other is when you get tunes, you can go in and unlike what I experienced with some of my um, so here's a, a tune that I've run because I've run some auto tunes on this thing, which is kind of cool. I'll cover that in the, in the live version. Um, but you can go back and do some editing on your, uh, your tune, your calibration, things like that. Um, I wish I would have known, you know, which where to go, but you can get in and, and do some things with this airflow you can change things on this. Now, this is this is scary and dangerous as hell, guys. Power Vision unlocks your world here, but they give you the opportunity to go in and make and tweak and change all this and then upload it or download it back into your tuner and then flash it back into your bike. Now, don't go hog wild on this shit thinking you know what you're doing because you can get in there and change some Lambda settings that really fuck your bike up. And what I mean that is you can run that bike so rich with fuel that you'll actually do what they call washing the pistons. You would dump so much fuel in there to where it can get the oil off of the moving components and you can actually cause damage to your engine. Likewise, you can go too lean. Now all of a sudden, you're getting too hot of a spark and you're actually burning holes in your piston causing damage that way. So don't take these things lightly. There are a lot of really good factory tunes that Power Vision gives you, that's what I started out with. Then I went back and auto-tuned mine. I use a closed loop. I use the narrow band factory um, O2 sensors. Uh, some people will buy the wide bands that can really go in and they can tune this thing on the fly, just like it's on a damn dyno uh, with the wide bands. Uh, but Power Vision really does a good job uh, making these things and assuming that some of these uh, settings are, uh, you know, they, let's say they, they get in and they, they figure out some of these tables here and they make some calculation adjustments based on raw data they have to give you some decent tunes. So uh, the auto-tune works very well for me. I have gone back and tweaked some of these numbers that I didn't like, uh, but again, I did not go down so far to make the, the bike respond in a negative way. It gives you a cool little graph there as well. Um, but you know, key difference on this tuner than the one I have on my truck. I have the Diablo Trinity T2. Love the tuner. Takes 20 minutes to download anything, a song and dance, turning the key on off 30 times. 20 minutes later, you got a tune. Whereas this Dino Jet slams it into the bike. It comes back real quick. I can make adjustments. The Tr Diablo Trinity, you can't go in and make any of these adjustments. You've got to collect the data, send it to somebody like Green Tuning, and have them make all the changes and then send you the tune back. Whereas DynaJet, they unlock your world here and they give you a lot of bang for the buck. I highly recommend it. It tells you things about your bike that Harley won't. It will tell you what's going on to your bike. And if you've got anything you need to troubleshoot, uh, this thing works. I'll, I'll link another one. Uh, where I actually used the power vision to know that my throttle twist grip position and my butterfly position was not matching up and why my bike was coding. And I actually, I think I went in there and actually pull, pushed the, the, the butterfly manually and you see some changes there. Uh, but it's a pretty cool tool. I love it. I, I was not sold on hanging something else on my bike, but I, this is one of the best investments I've made since I tuned my thing. So... Any questions, drop them in the comments. I'm not an expert, but I know enough to get dangerous with some of this, and it's, it's pretty cool stuff to look at.